Welcome to chapter 9. It's a shorter slide deck again for this chapter, which means that some of the emphasis gets pushed back to the textbook for you to read. But also this chapter is talking about customer defined service standards and that means that we're dealing with a very applied chapter. So there's a lot more discussion and application here and more illustrations and examples for you to engage with. So what we're looking for in chapter 9 is what is necessary to develop these service standards? What are the sort of types of standards you can expect? And when we start talking about it, there's a process and then there's a way of seeing the procedure. So it'll be a quick one, this one. Effectively, one of the terminologies that show up in marketing, the phrase hard and soft, has a very negative connotation. Every time you see the phrase hard versus soft, it's usually putting some denigration on soft, which is not an appropriate way to be looking at service standards. We probably want to be looking at these from the point of view of measurable and valuable. Because treating soft standards as discardable means you're going to lose money and get it wrong. And that's it. There's no negotiable, well, we measured the hard things to measure. Well, the reality is if you didn't engage the complex, difficult, and awkward measures that were in the customer defined areas that you refer to as soft, your firm goes broke and you can have measured things to your heart's content, you will have failed. That's the reality of how services works. People wanting to say, oh, you know, hard numerics, hard numbers, soft therefore not important go broke so the hard metric is you will lose money and go broke if you don't get the soft metrics right now really hammer that home because it's the one thing i've seen destroy more good ideas than anything else is that somehow dealing with measures that can't be quantified means that those measures aren't real a lot of flaws in that Okay, so what are we looking for in service behaviors? We're looking, again, we want service standards because we're looking to address inconsistency and to either build on it, so low level of standardization, or to diffuse it, high level of standardization. So customization is the antithesis of standardization. You can meet a middle point of standardized and customized, but the more customization you have, the more you're down one end of the spectrum, the more standardization you have, the more you're at the other. And this is a good thing. Neither are right, neither are wrong. There are points on a spectrum, and you choose the best point on the spectrum to operate from. So in the terms of service standards, what we're looking at here is that Services marketing is entirely predicated on the customer and the customer's perceptions and the customer's expectations. So you need to ensure that for the service gap model to function, you know what the expectations of the customers are. So therefore, those expectations drive some of the standards. Now, the critical hack as marketers is that we can modify the standards. We can modify the customer's perception of what a good standard is or what good service looks like or what our expectations should be. So we define them around what the customer currently or the customer that we want would have. And then we look at it and say, are these reasonable standards that we can implement? If they are, we go with them because that's gonna be more profitable. If these are unreasonable standards and we still want this market, we look at what we can do to modify the market's perception of the standards. Basically, the idea of customer-defined standards is what are the customer's expectations of your service based on what you're communicating through your price, physical appearance, descriptions, integrated marketing communications. What are you promising and do those match what the customers are expecting? So that dichotomy again, the counted times observed, the hard standards, then the difficult standards. Because you'll note that in hard standards, it's 
objectivity and very customer side, oh, sorry, very company side. We produced 13 things, we've made 14 things. It took 45 seconds for each thing. Yeah, but customer wanted one thing and for that thing to go for an hour. Hard standards are count, can you can count them, time them. But that's the thing you wanna be really careful is that you don't drive the entirety of your experience around hard standards. Because the key and absolute killer application here is the soft standards are customer perceptions. And perceptions are the framework of the zone of tolerance, perceptions and expectations. So the soft standards and measures measure perception and expectation, hard standards measure service blueprint. In other words, the hard standards are probably the first thing if you had to discard one of the two, you could discard the hard standards and survive. They are the easiest thing to measure. They are the quite often the less complex thing to measure. And frankly, on a regular basis, they're the less valuable thing to measure. But they are objective and therefore they get the term hard attached to them. All right, let's talk about the process for setting customer defined standards because this is really important. And this is an area that I want you to engage in a textbook. So each of these steps, we've got an eight step process and the text is gonna go into the details. As always, when you see a step by step guide like this, what I'm looking for you to be doing is understanding its application and understanding the additional areas of marketing that are going to come on and be valuable and that you can draw on. So in terms of setting a standard, we're identifying a desired service encounter sequence, service blueprinting. We're translating customer expectations into behaviors and actions, consumer behavior, market research. Determining the appropriate standards, we're looking at product development, we're looking at marketing mix. Develop measurements for those standards, market research. Establish target levels for those standards, smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timetabled. Track measures against those standards, metrics, implementation. Provide feedback about performance to employees, HR, service role. Update target levels and measures. Loop back around. What from this information helps us identify the service and counter sequence? What from this information lets us go and then now what we've measured and we've observed, what do we know now from going through this process that we didn't know at steps two, three, and four? What did we observe that we didn't necessarily measure that we could measure next time or that we could understand and interpret? So this is a section of the text that, again, I want you to go over. We'll talk about it more in a class environment. And it's a bit more of a case, case illustration. But you'll note that at point four, measurements for standards, it's market research. And that is why the market research toolkit is qualitative and quantitative, because in services, you need both. The last thing I'm going to talk to you about is talking about getting the smart level objectives, where we're going and talking about actionable steps. What you're dealing with here is the marketing, where marketing goes from a marketing strategic plan, from a vision statement for a company, through to a marketing implementation framework and a to-do list. So at the abstract level, through to the concrete level. At the abstract level, we all know that we want high quality service, or we want satisfaction, or we want value for money. But what does that mean in terms of what are the parameters? So in services marketing, we use the RATA measure. So we know we've got reliability, assurance, tangibility, empathy, and responsiveness. But what does that mean in terms of delivering a service? What does responsiveness mean in terms of communication or distinct attributes that you can point to and say, 
this service is reliable because they answer their emails quickly, or this service is reliable because the appointments start on time, or this service is reliable because they will contact me if there is a problem and they are responsive because they are going to alert me in advance if there are delays so that they are valuing my time as much as I'm valuing my time. Attributes into behaviours and actions. So this company is reliable, this company is responsive and this company has empathy. How does that translate into specific? If the delivery will be late, they will contact you, offer to reschedule, or offer to con you are, say, dealing with a doctor's surgery. The doctor's surgery messages you and says the doctor is running behind time today. We will contact you. And how long do you need to have as notice? They contact you and say, we're running behind schedule. We're about an hour behind schedule. How much time do you need to get down to the clinic? When would you like to be notified? A half, is a half hour window of advance notice enough time? Rata's in play, it's a specific task and it's a specific behavior. So the closer you get to the concrete, the more concrete, and again, uh, looking at this in terms of a concrete series of actionable activities can be identified through a service blueprint. They can then be measured because they become checklists, items on to-do lists, but they all need to be connected to these abstractions of what are we trying to do with our service? Are we trying to be consistent? Are we trying to be flexible? Are we trying to be reliable? Or are we trying to be add the element of randomness as a value add? What is it we want to do? So these frameworks uh, this is one of these chapters where there's a lot more of the read it, look at the case study, look at the examples in the text, because it's a very applied, very hands-on section. As always, if you need me, contact me across the email or connect me on Twitter. Very short slide deck for this uh, chapter, so it does push some of the co-creation back onto you. Uh, really, this is about going through those frameworks, working through those steps and ensuring that you feel comfortable that with this framework and something about, I just want to explain to you about something like customer defined standards, I would only ask you to implement this in an assignment. I would say to you, these are eight steps, implement these eight steps. I wouldn't expect you to go into an exam room and try and remember all eight steps and what the components were because that's not how you'd operate in business. So when you deal with something like this, this is about how do I apply it? How do I make it useful? When can I use it to make it valuable? And that's a wrap for the chapter for this season.